Is there any concerns with the with the Broncos that you saw in round one? Obviously, it is only round one, but is there yeah. certain parts where you felt like could be better? Um, I just look. I, I think they looked a little bit unorganised at times, Kempi. Mm. Yeah, and that comes down to you know the the communication and the combination of your nine, seven, and six mainly. Your your number one is is involved as well, but I just think that you know communi- there was a bit of a breakdown between the organisation between um, Walters, Ma'am. And Reynolds, yeah, Renault's kicking was a little bit off too. So yeah, sure. he, mate, he's he's been in the game for a long time. He's a professional. Um, coming back to Australia, I think he would have done a lot of work on that. Um, like I said, mate, I, I think I think they'll fix up those um, those deficiencies that they had over in Vegas, and uh, they'll they'll play well. I, I, that that's the main thing. Once they have that cohesion back, um, they'll be hard to beat. Wasn't it interesting seeing like how small a space Reese Walsh usually works in? Because yeah. he was probably the only player that really did struggle with that short, uh, that tighter field in Vegas. Yeah. You could see him, you know, constantly running out of room. Yep. Where usually that's the space that he attacks, and he just slides through somehow, some way. Yeah, absolutely. And and mate, they they last year in particular, they they did a a really good job of. Um, creating space for Reese Walsh just to use that blinding speed, right? So he'd get him out the back of those sweeping block plays and then he'd have his little skip, his little goosey. Um, he'd get outside the opposition centre and he'd have that space then to either go through it or, you know, draw and pass to his centre or winger. Whereas that skinnier, more narrow field of the NFL, it just, that space wasn't there, mm. right? So it's easier. There's less, there's less field to defend for the opposition, but... He still come up with that unbelievable oh. play. Oh my god! Unbelievable play where he put that sort of in and away on a defender, and then was able to drop the ball onto his left <laughs> boot. Just, uh, just, oh, mate! When you watch it, you're just like, how, mate? He, he's how do you do that? His highlight reel by the end of his career is going to be outrageous, like seriously <laughs> outrageous. Uh, all righty, Sharks v the Bulldogs. Uh, Craig Fitzgibbon. Um, He's only made one change, and that's Rudolph mm. moves to the starting side, who I thought was outstanding against the Warriors. Uh, Hunt goes to the bench. He, yes, he did. Um, he struggled with a couple offloads that didn't need to be, I guess, thrown. But hopefully, he can mm. bounce back. Ito has been named 18th man, so he might come in soon. Ado Car out for a few weeks as he recovers from an AC injury with a new recruit Tracy taking place on the wing. Besides that, Seraldo is stuck with his round one side. Mm-hmm. Sexton to get a sniff in the halves this year, potentially. Jerry at 18th man. Apparently, he went well in attack in New South Wales Cup. Struggled a little mm-hmm. bit in defence. Yep. What do you reckon about this? Yeah, look, I think Sharkies will win this one. We still, I think this Bulldog side will, will take a few weeks to get going, um, given you know, there's some new players and, and whatnot, and they're still, I reckon their, their team is not quite settled, particularly their starting 13. I don't know if Seraldo is sort of... Um, yeah, settled on what is his best 13. Uh, and we've covered a fair bit of the doggies already. Um, so we'll talk a bit about the Sharks. You know, Fitzy, you know, of course he's shown in faith in the side that went over to New Zealand and had a strong win because they played so well. Mm. Rudolph, of course, comes in. He's uh, he's a great front rower. This will be live on SEN as well, Kempi. Jimmy Smith, Timmy Manor and Justin Horro covering this one. Look, you can't look past the Sharks, really. They love Shark Park. They love playing at home. Um, I think this will be one that's a little bit too hard for doggies. Yeah, I think the the Sharkies will probably get the job done. I guess the question will be, can the Sharks attack click? Because their attack uh, on the weekend was pretty clunky. Oh, pretty clunky is an understatement. Um, For the Sharkies, they're actually favourites, outright favourites, to be top of the ladder by round five and round ten because their run... To yep. top eight sides is is you know very minimal, mm-hmm. and if I'm um, if I'm Crave is given, you know I, I wouldn't be you don't want to look too far ahead for sure, mm. but at the same time, you need to take the points we can get them, and yep. if you can finish that round ten, winning seven out of the ten games, yeah, geez that puts you in good stead heading into the back end of the season. Yeah, well, mate, we we've spoken about this on the show before. Like, if you can bank wins early, you put yourself in a really good position coming into you know, the last part of the season because you just don't know who's who's going to be available, um, who's playing rep footy. Um, you know, big chance that Nico Hines will be playing State of Origin football this year. So there goes your half for, yeah, maybe two 
possibly three matches um, during that origin period, depending on you know the structure of your season and the and the draw. But you got to bank them, mate. Like you, you really do. And and I don't think when I was playing, I I didn't have an issue looking ahead slightly. Mm. You know, this was a big no no for Craig. Like he just he he <laughs> was dead set. He he was dead set day at a time. Yeah, well, you know, let alone you know sort of looking forward to who's who's coming up next. But like for the Sharkies as a player, I I I, I don't mind looking ahead, thinking, well, okay, let's. Let's look at the next month and and put a bit of a goal of of where we should be sitting. Like, you know, they take on the dogs this week, and then after that they've got the West Tigers um, at Leichhardt. Then they take on the Raiders round four, round five they've got the bye. Yeah. So like, if you Sharky's looking at that, thinking, well, you know what, like, it's it's it wouldn't be unfair of us to think that we could be undefeated in round five. Yeah, mate, I think that having a goal as a playing group, it just, it almost focuses you a little bit because sometimes I feel like if you just, and look, who am I to question the great Craig Bellamy? <laughs> he clearly knows what he's talking about. Um, but I, I do think it does focus you a little bit, especially not necessarily in the tougher games, but in the not so tough games. Yeah. Um, because if you go, okay, boys, we can win four out of five, and you yep. roll into your second or third game against a lower tier side, quotation. Yes. Yes. It focuses you in and says, not just like, oh, we'll go out and get it done. It goes, no, no, we have to because we no. have this goal. That's right, mate. Keeps you on task, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, next game. Para, sorry, Panthers versus the Eels. Friday, 8 p.m. Uh, that's weird. Friday, yeah, so Friday, 8 p.m., Blue Bet Stadium. Huge clash. Kenny returns. Uh, I think he is one, one of the most underappreciated hookers in the competition. Yep. He takes his place going, um, so basically, yeah, he'll start. Uh, and then you've got Scotty Sorensen, also returns in the back row. Another guy, super underrated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eels team news. Arthur has gone with the same 17 that got the job done over the dog over the doggies. There was doubt around Moses and a groin injury, which he will overcome. Yep. What are your thoughts on this absolutely huge clash? Yeah, great matchup. Um, not just with the teams, but also individuals. You know, you got Moses versus Cleary in the halves. Uh, the... What I'm keen to see is how how do Penrith bounce back? Mm. How do Penrith bounce back? Because all I, I believe in these early rounds, particularly after that loss against Melbourne, I think there's going to be a few eyeballs on Penrith. Right now, they they have done what no other team's done in a in a very very long time, and that's won three consecutive premierships. Right, um, in a, in a extremely competitive competition, but the way they've started out this year, um, with you know they they went over to England. They lost in, you know, I guess controversial circumstances. But then they come home, they're well below their best against Melbourne, and they lose that one as well. I guess now is how do they bounce back mm. against the side that they, you know, Parramatta, out of all the teams in the competition, off the top of my head, I'm just trying to think that they've probably got the best uh, win loss record against them in the past three years, Campy. Would that be oh, fairly easily. accurate for saying that? Easily. I'll actually, I'll get it up um, in a sec here because it was actually posted to Instagram and they are, so they have a 45% win rate against the Penrith Panthers during this dynasty. Mm -hmm. Then it goes Melbourne Storm with 36. Then it goes West Tigers, 33%. Wow. Um, So Parramatta, absolutely. They've won five of 11 games, which is pretty incredible when you consider Penrith's dynasty record. Yep. And that's thanks to Random Sats Guy, by the way, on Instagram. There you go. Um, so, if there's ever a chance of someone knocking them off, I guess Eels are the team to do it. And they and they've won at Penrith too, mate. Yeah, they've they've beat them up there at Bluebet. So, um, yeah, Battle of the West. I, I, I'm really looking forward to this one. Well, it's it's such a unique position because you know we've never really had a side in our generation win three premierships in the white right row. And I will tell you what sells papers: Penrith Panthers go zero and three. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that will happen, but people that, you know, to the to the hardcore footy fans, we all know that these guys mm-hmm. could kick into gear by round 11 or 12. Yep. But if they go loss, 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 or something along those lines, which is it's a tiny fraction in the grand scheme of things of what they can do, yep. the, the headlines will write themselves, and that's when external pressure will really test their, you know, 
resolve of not pointing because for the last mm. three years mm. there's been essentially no dramas. I know they started a little bit slow last year, but uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't that slow. No. Now it's all everything is much easier when you're winning footy games. But then cra- you know cracks that were there the whole time, but you're winning mm. footy games they don't you know become apparent. But when you get pressure from media from ex- outside noise. Things that maybe weren't so good do get mm-hmm. exposed. Now, I don't think that Penrith are a club that have a lot of cracks. I think they're absolutely incredible. But yeah. what I am saying is is that there are so many people in the media that cannot wait to write that article that Penrith have fallen off, and you don't want to give them that ammo. No. But you'd think, like, it's coming soon, right? So it's what Melbourne's cop for the last, how long do you reckon? Decades? Seriously, yeah. forever. You know what I mean? Like, like oh, this is the year. This is the year. And it's just the storyline that's written about teams that have dominated. Mm. And so I suppose when you look at a side like Penrith, who have done such a great job over the last three seasons, well, you'd say four seasons. They they finished runners-up in 2020. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for a team that's done so well, like they're starting to um, have to give up players. Yeah. And it's just a, it's just, it's a consequence of their own um, – you know, well, their development, but also their the quality of their performances and, and the way that they've gone on and won many, many football games. You know, clubs are out there. They they want they want their players. Mm. They want their players to come to their club and have that influence on their club. So how many how many players have they lost now over the last couple of years? Oh mate. Because of because of constraints on the salary cap. So they start out as juniors. They come through that in, that entire system out there at Penrith, and they do so well to you know to bring them up through that pathway. They become consistent first graders, then they then they become representative players, premiership players, and then they can't afford to keep them all. So that's the challenge now for Penrith is to keep rejuvenating their squad when they're consistently losing players to other clubs going in and and, and just offering money that they can't afford to pay, um, which we've seen you know with. Crichton with, you know, Spencer Lee New now, um, Luai will be moving on next year. That's the challenge for them, as well as aiming up every week yep. because every team is out to get them. Yep. Every team, a lot of, you know, a lot of fans because, you know, we all love the underdog coming through, but mm-hmm. as soon as they get on top, you know, we, we love to find a reason to hate um, look, I think Panthers are, are prepared for this. I think that just recently they announced a, the re-signing of ta- um, of Tungle, which is a great yes. re-signing. Yes. Um, but this this clash, oh man, it's going to be fireworks. We're going to head to a break. After the break, our preview of round two continues. Australia's most awarded extra virgin olive oil, grown, harvested, and first cold pressed in Northern Victoria. Let's go straight into it, shall we? Raiders host the Tigers. Saturday, 3 p.m. at GIO Stadium, Canberra Team News. Chris returns for suspension. I got it out eventually. And has mm-hmm. been named in the centres with Rapana retaining the fullback uh, jumper. Mm. Kotrick drops to 18th man. Danny Levi has been named at hooker despite leaving the field with a quad injury against the Knights. Team News for the Tigers. Benji Marshall's first NRL coaching appearance at the Tigers starts their 2024 campaign. Lachlan Galvin will be making his first grade debut. With the 18-year-old being named at 5'8", joining Jaden Sullivan in the Haas. Caesar named at 14. Assuming Caesar will play a bit of a hooker. Uh, apologies, Solomona Fatape. Apologies if I'm saying that incorrectly. Makes his debut in the centres. And Fainu is named on the bench for his club debut. What do you reckon, mm. Smitty? Yeah, well, this is a big one for the West Tigers. They sat back uh, last weekend, Kempi, and was able to just watch you know, the, the competition play out and have a look at all the teams and the way the footy's being played and they come in fresh. Um, so you could probably look at that from a positive point of view that you know, everyone's fresh and ready to go and keen to play their first match. Or you could say, well, they're, they're one behind everyone else. The Raiders had a great victory, of course, up in Newey. We spoke about that earlier. And do they continue that that run at home in Canberra? Um, mate, if they do, I think it comes down to their starting props. Tarpany and uh, Josh Papali'i were fantastic on the weekend. Mate, how good's Josh Papali'i? He just keeps producing. So apparently he lost eight kilos in the off-season. Eight kilos? Yeah, so that's why he's looking so fit and lean. Wow. Yeah. Big fella's still 120. <laughs> big boy. <laughs> big bit of gear, the big fella. Yeah. Big and maybe um, 
Maybe two. Like last year, he decided to um, retire from representative football. Well, yeah, particularly well, he's not playing state of origin, and I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that was just that's freshened him up mentally as well, knowing well, you know, I don't have to worry about that 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 mid year rep stuff anymore. I can just concentrate on my my club footy. Um, I reckon he's had a, a pretty good off season. Well, it looks like he's had a good a good um, preseason with the Raiders and got in there and got some K's in the legs because he was fantastic on the weekend. Mate, that forward pack for the Raiders, it was missing Horsburgh and Elliot Whitehead. And the two guys that came in, Hosking and Smithies, were outstanding. Yep. So to think that those guys will probably be coming off the bench when they're full strength. Yep. I understand that their spine, you know, probably going to take a bit of time to gel. But I, I was just, I guess, surprised at how exciting their play was through the forwards. Now, we know they can roll their sleeves up. But at an offload here and there, like, look, I don't have the Raiders in my eight. I don't. But they might be one of the hardest teams to play in the competition. And what I mean yep. by that, I don't necessarily mean they're going to come out and play the best level of football. Mm. But a lot of teams that are top tier will go, mm. yeah, yeah, we should, you know, look it on paper. We should beat this side. They're never going to give you an easy win, this Raiders side. They're never going to do it under Ricky Stewart. And that's going to be exciting for Raiders fans. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um you know, when when you look at their forward pack in particular, like they they compete. It doesn't matter where they play, who they play. They they just go out and compete and scrap. And they've got some similar players in the back line as well. And then you throw in a guy like Jamal Fogarty. Um, for, I, I still scratch my head as to why the Titans let him go. Oh mate, don't like, get me I, I, don't, I don't know what the backstory was there, and, and you know, I'm not I'm not um, sort of up to speed with with what happened, but. You know, I, I think he's been one of the signings of the last couple of seasons for, for mine. You know, I, I just think he's done some great things for the for the Raiders. He just control controls things nicely for them at seven. He's got a great kicking game. He's a good goal kicker as well. You know, pretty strong defender. He's a he's a shorter, the sort of nuggety little fella. But I just think he he gets the job done. You know, consistently every week. Well, he's such a good example of. Like, so when it happened at the Titans, basically they re-signed him. And then I'm pretty sure Sexton came in and played some good games at the end of the year. Yeah. And then the CEO came out and said that Sexton will be the seven next year. And then before you know it, uh, Fogarty is off to the Raiders. And he's mm -hmm. such a good example of, so we often get um, almost romanticized about the next big young seven. And we forget about the, the older seven that is structured, gives you a good foundation. Yep. Yes. Is he going to do the big plays? Maybe not. But not every player needs to be that. And so... No. I agree with you, mate. I just never understood uh, why they got rid of him when they'd already done this dance. The uh, sorry, the Titans. They'd already done this dance with Ash Taylor, where they brought in a seven too soon, mm -hmm. and it just didn't seem to work out for him. Anyway, sorry, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got plenty more rugby league to talk about. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the Tigers. Don't worry, Tigers fans. And we've got Cowboys v the Knights. Shall we? Uh, here's a text: The media will be frothing at the mouth for Penrith to go zero and three. There has been. Never been a dynasty team like them who constantly get torn apart by the media, even when they're killing it. Uh, the teams they are versing are lucky to be getting them right now when things are not telling. This could go on, and with we could win the Prem even with a 0-3 and three start. Probably the only team to be able to. I will say, you know, Storm dealt with it for quite a while. I understand Storm mm. didn't, you know, win three in a row. But, you know, put it, put it this way. If you're a dominant side, you know, People go after you no matter what. Yeah. You know, the first couple of, you know, honeymoon years, we all love you. And then after a while, it's like, yes. you know, uh, you can speak to this more than me, Smithy. Yeah, no, I think it's um, it's the way we do things in Australia, isn't it? Mm. I think, you know, we enjoy watching a champion go around for a little bit. And then when that champion keeps winning, we just, we've had enough. <laughs> we want someone, give someone else a go. Yeah. Give someone else a go. <laughs> Well, that's what it felt, you know, it, it, it felt like that, you know, playing those years at the Storm. And I'm not saying those teams I played with at Storm were like Penrith because they weren't. We didn't win three premierships in a row. We, we, we played in consecutive grand finals, but we weren't good enough to win them like Penrith. Um, but, you know, as a club, they, they've played 15 of the last 18 prelim finals, the Storm. So they've been very consistent. Uh, sorry, 15 of the last 18 seasons they've been in the top four. So they've been very consistent. Um, a lot of those 15 years, they played all the way up to the prelim final, if not the grand final. So, um, yeah, and, and people got, got sick of it. They just That's why they said they, they spoke about it. Like, when is this team going to drop off the cliff and give someone else a go? But, you know, Penrith have done a great job. And 
I agree with with that that comment saying they're possibly a side, the only side in this competition that could go zero and three and still win it. Yeah, absolutely. Now they hundred percent could. We just quickly uh, storm take on the Warriors. Mm. Uh, big big clash for obviously both sides. But how do you see this playing out? Yeah, look, I think you know for Storm they want to build on last week. It, you know, Craig would have said, "Let's try and back up that defensive effort." Um, he did mention in the post game that he, you know he was a little bit um, wasn't overly happy with the way they played in general. I don't. He said they didn't play that smart, so he want an improvement there. For the Warriors, I think they just they want to bounce back from that from that result on the weekend. I think yeah you know, they should have been good enough to finish it off. They didn't. Always a big match this one, Kempi. Yeah. Storm taking on uh, the Warriors in Melbourne. Given you know, there's a lot of uh, expats living in Melbourne as far as Kiwis are concerned. It'll be a big crowd, big atmosphere. Both teams will be up for this one. Now, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we'll get into quickly more teams and then we'll uh, round the show off. Seagulls versus the Roosters. How do you see it, Smithy? Yeah, look, I'm I'm tipping Manly, although there's a couple Ooh. of big names back for the Chookins. Uh, JWH, he's back from that lengthy suspension. Uh, Spencer Lenu out, of course, though. Dom Young, we're hoping hoping to see him back on the wing after that little uh, soft tissue injury to the neck that he had in the preseason game. So, But I've got Manly. They're strong at home, mate. They love playing at Brookie. And I don't think – do Chooks fans travel that way get across the bridge? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think they even know it exists, to be honest. Um, no. No. Mate, I'm going to go Roosters, I think. Ooh, I think. okay. Yes. Um, Dolphins v. the Dragons. How do you see it playing out? Uh, I'm going Dragons just based on their first up performance. So they were very good. They've got a settled side. Um, and there's there's mass changes at Dolphins. Uh, Ewan Aiken comes into the back row. Uh, Lemmy Elu injured himself, so that's a force change. Sean O'Sullivan out. Um, young Katoa comes in um, into the halves. Jake Avarillo, really interested to see how he goes. He's making his debut for the Finns. Um, he comes into the centres for Tessie New um, on the weekend, who you know w- wasn't at his best. So Jake Avarillo gets a start. Lots of changes for me. So I'm going to go the Red V, mate. Dragons. Mate, I am uh, I think I'm going to go with you. I think the Dragons look good. Yep. Uh, and I agree with you in regards to a bit of changes for the Dolphins. So it might take a couple of weeks to get used to them. Uh, but that's uh, another week done and dusted of the captain's run. Thank you, oh, Smithy. Thank you, mate. Let's hope the tips go better this week, boys. Oh no, seriously, come on. they've got lift. It. They've got come it. Come on, these teams, mate. Like, come, like favourites. Can you just have a win, please? And uh, up the Corumbin Eagles, eh? Yeah, the yeah the Eagles. <laughs> they got the week off. They had a, they had a trial game last week. They went well, the young fellas. They got a week off training tonight. Might be a little bit of fitness. You know what I mean? And just quietly, uh, my face could be your mascot. The Eagles. Oh, oh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I'm the team mascot as well as the assistant to the assistant.